Hi friends, this is M, and welcome back to another video. We made it through September, and I'm so excited. I read so many good books in September. Like, honestly, it's to the point where the amount of great books that I read this month take up the same amount of space as my neck alley stats, which I feel like is pretty good. <laughs> My favorites actually weren't even new releases. I know, that's so strange to think about. But for, for me, I usually get in the arc, arc, arc. All I want to do is arc. When there are so many books that I still haven't read that came out before, you know, NetGalley existed. <laughs> so that, that's sort of where, where I'm at on that. My favorite backlist titles that I read this month were The Last Quintista and Priory of the Orange Tree. And so <laughs> I'm just going to talk about Priory for a second because that is over 800 pages. And the fact that I finished that in like three or four days, in my opinion, is astounding. That's like running a marathon for me. <laughs> like, I think, I think that I would be more likely to be able to run a marathon in a day than finish Priory in a day without training. <laughs> I will say that this month I definitely noticed that my reading speed is hindered so much when I don't read on ebook or audiobook. Yeah. Because I started The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab because uh, her Shades of Magic series was one of the things that got me back into reading after so long. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> he, he would be so mad at me if I didn't give him credit. He's the one who recommended that series to me. And I'm fully obsessed. But I was reading it physically because my library didn't have the, uh, the ebook, right? And like, for, for big fantasy series, audiobooks usually don't work for me. But just because I need to see the name in order to sort of like associate it with things. But the Priory of the Orange Tree, I really liked it. If you're into fantasy and like, maybe you like YA fantasy, but the, the idea of the big book scares you, you'll be fine. Just imagine it, it's three books put together. <laughs> you can read three books. Um, and with, with that in mind, it, it honestly is a lot less intimidating. I really enjoyed the characters. And just, while the, the plot line sometimes was a little bit YA for me, I don't know, it was still pretty good. But the sci-fi book that I read this month, The Last Quintista, which is middle grade, that part, that part just astounded me because I was listening to it and I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, um, she's on a spaceship and there's these aliens and they're trying to kill her. Yeah, that seems middle grade. <laughs> it was just so good and it was all about the impact of storytelling and culture and stuff like that. So good. I read that for, I think, I think it was the 52 Book Club's cha uh, challenge for a Newbery Award winner. But the thing is that since I was reading a lot of books off my shelf, right? I read 23 books this month. 13 of them were NetGalley books. <clears throat> that meant that I needed to calm down my requesting just a smidge, which I did. I did. I still reviewed more than I appro was approved for, and I didn't go ham, uh, like, collecting all of the widgets like I usually do. I was still pretty, pretty happy about that. I did... <laughs> I did snag Rule of the Aurora King by, I think it's N Nisha Tooley. And so this is one of the books that I've been recommending in the sort of, okay, so you read Fourth Wing and now you need to wait a year for Iron, Iron Flame to come out. This is one of the books I recommend. Uh, it's definitely new adult. There are some sexual themes in it, uh, but the writing style is so easy to read and like I read this when I was in yeah. 
God, I think in two hours when I was dealing with allergies. <laughs> so like I thought I was sick and I thought I was gonna die. It's, it was, it was just really fun. Like I gave it four stars and I'm just really, really happy with it. And I honestly, I don't think that I would have picked it up had it not been for taking a more conscious approach to reading BIPOC authors this month. So spoilers, I read 57%. This is like, the, I think the first time all year that I've actually cracked that uh, for my goal. And it, it, it just takes, it just takes intentionality. Like anyone can, you just have to try. <laughs> that being said, I do think that in October, it's gonna take a dip because I'm doing this challenge where like I'm reading my shelves and in order to get through and clear my shelves, there's gonna be a lot more white authors on there. And I, and I know that, but the thing is that, you know, I know in the future going forward that I've been making more conscious choices about what I'm purchasing. And so in the future, if I'm doing a reading my shelves challenge, it's not going to be hard, right, to meet my 50% criterion. So a little, little bit of good, a little bit of bad there. I will say I also really loved Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. So this is her YA chess. Although I would, it's not quite YA. I feel like it's kind of new adult-ish. Um, but think like, think like Queen's Gambit, but Ali, Ali Hazelwood wrote it. <laughs> so if you like her writing, you'll like this. Um, I would honestly like to see her write more YAs because I just really liked the pacing. I thought it was really good. <laughs> we also, in terms of pacing, uh, I read Finley Donovan Rolls the Dice this month. And where I thought that the... Uh, prior one, Finley Donovan Jumps the Gun, was a little slow. This one was high octane, fast, fast, fast the whole time, which was refreshing. I very, I was very, very happy about that. And also in that vein, uh, Thieves Gambit, which is by KVN Lewis, which also, I think it's getting turned into a movie, which is awesome because when you're reading it, it's just so cinematic and there's definitely going to be a second book, which if it performs well, should mean that there's a second movie. Yes. <laughs> and I think, honestly, so Thieves Gambit, it's a lot like Ocean's Eleven, um, except that it's like a heist competition. So if you like Ocean's Eleven, if you like the Hawthorne uh, books, yeah. this one is definitely one that you're gonna wanna pick up. I still have questions. I DM'd the author about my questions. <laughs> that, that's how that's how pressing these were and how quickly I will just hop into an author's DMs. Um, just a reminder, when you do that, be nice, always. Like, don't say, hey, I hated that you did this. Why did you do that? Don't do that. <laughs> like, duh. Um, this month, my uh, LGBTQIA plus stats were still pretty good, but my disability rep stats definitely dropped. So I think, you know, it's so, sometimes it's hard to know whether a book is going to meet your, LG, uh, your disability rep before you read it, right? Because in some cases they're discovering that they're having mental health issues or whatever. But it's just something, again, that I need to be cognizant of. That's all. We'll see. We'll see if this month, if more physical books get read. Highly unlikely. Uh, I will probably be reading ebook or audiobook versions of them, except for the gender queer graphic novel, because that that one, that one I am all in for. I hope that you liked this video. Let me know in the comments what your favorite book of September was and what you're looking forward to reading in October. And don't forget to check out Jess's video. I always forget to say this in the beginning, but this is an ongoing collab and I love doing it with her. And yeah, that's about it. As always, happy planning.